Hello friends, this video on Atom and Molecules part 3 is brought to you by examva.com. No more fear from exam. Now, you must be thinking why. Right? Why we have law of chemical combinations? We have two different laws. Okay. And these are all experimental data. Till now, as I told you, water has 2 and 16, that is the ratio. But why is this specific number? Why for ammonia it is 14 and 3? Why? Right? There are so many compounds, you can take so many other ratios. For every compound, you have specific ratio. For HCl, it is 1, hydrogen 1 and 35.5. Why? Right? There has to be some reason. These were all experimental data, but nobody had reasons why it is behaving in such a specific manner. For this, Dalton gave theory. In 1808, please know, not very old, only 200 years old, Dalton gave atomic theory. He told that, first theory, all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. This is similar to the philosophy by Indian Maharishi and Democritus. He just confirmed that in his theory. He told that all the matter, you take any matter, you take water, you take laptop, you take anything. That is matter, that is mass, is made up of tiny particles called atoms. The second theory he told was, all these atoms are indivisible. They cannot be created nor can be destroyed. In fact, this theory I marked in green because this proved to be wrong. But this was his theory. He told that the matter, atom is an indivisible, are indivisible particles. We will see that atoms can further be broken into electrons, protons and neutrons. And in the higher class, you will see that these particles can also be broken into some other particles. So, with the current advancement in science, this theory is incorrect. But still, that Dalton atomic theory was a big success that time because it helped to give an experimental touch to atom topic. Okay. An atom of a given elements are identical in mass and chemical properties. This is true. In fact, this one they cannot be created or destroyed is wrong because they have seen. You will see that post Uranus, post Uranium, there are so many elements which are created. They are man made and they are created by bombarding alpha and beta and other particles in existing atoms. So that means atoms can be created. Right, and atoms can be destroyed. So these, these, this theory is not correct. But apart from that, this theory is also correct. They are, they have identical mass and chemical property. We talk about the atom of oxygen. It will always have some property that it will have some particular weight and it will have uh, identical mass and chemical property. We will talk about that. Right, atoms of different elements have different mass and different chemical property. These are actually uh, both. Similar, right? I mean, it says that atom for a given element have identical mass and identical chemical property, and an atom of different element have different mass and chemical property. So that means two different atoms can never have same atomic mass, right? These two atoms should have different atomic mass. Chemical properties, I can say to some extent, they may match little bit but the mass of two different atoms will not be seen in fact that is the uh, differentiating factor for different atoms they have different mass right and these atoms combine in the whole number to form compounds for example two hydrogen will compound with one oxygen to form water it's always whole number it is not that uh, 2.5 hydrogen will combine with one oxygen. This will not happen. This will not happen. 
okay it is always in the whole number never in the fraction and the the relative number and the kind of atoms are constant in a given compound if you talk about compound for example water the number and the kinds of atoms in this is always same you take water from any source it will have same atoms in the same proportion right this is the law of constant proportion so he gave all these theory in 1808 talton atomic theory all these points were correct but only the second point was not true is not true because the current advancement in science we are in a position to break these particles and we the scientists have actually created and, and destroyed atoms as well okay so this data theory actually was able to explain the law of conservation of mass and law of constant proportion correct see the law of constant proportion if you see this this talks about the law of constant proportion okay so this this was a big success so let's take some questions now to understand these concepts better so in the reaction 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate and a 2 co3 sodium carbonate then this is 5.3 3 gram react with 6 gram of ethanoic acid ethanoic acid is c2h5 cooh you study about these in the higher classes 6 gram and the product was 2.2 gram of carbon dioxide the product was 2.2 gram of carbon dioxide 0.9 gram of water and 8.2 gram of sodium ethanoic C2H5 8.2 and show that these observations are in agreement with law of conservation of mass. So law of conservation of mass says that given the whole thing reacted right this was at t is equal to let me say t is equal to 0 and this is t is equal to 2. So this was let me put here once again. This was zero, this was zero, and this was zero. Correct. So T is equal to zero, the reactants were there, the product was zero. T is equal to T, the reaction happened. All these reactants are consumed totally, and we have got this product. So if you see the reaction side, uh, reactant side quantity or weight, so the reactant was 5.3 plus 0.6 that is 11.3 and the product is you add 8.2 plus 0.9 is 9.1 plus 2.2 so if you see the reacting the product matches so the law of conservation of mass says that the matter can neither be created nor can be destroyed so in this case uh, we started with 11.3 gram and we have 11.3 gram. Actually, we should add in this fashion. T is equal to 0. The total prior volume, the total weight was all these. 5.3 plus 6 plus 0 plus 0. And T is equal to T, the total weight was these values. So we should have added in this fashion. Right? T is equal to 0. 11.3 gram t is equal to t 11.3 gram there was no change in the mass so let's take another example hydrogen and oxygen combine in the ratio 1 by 8 by mass to form water so hydrogen oxygen this is 1 this is 8 right to form water what mass of oxygen will be required to react completely to form 3 gram to with 3 gram of hydrogen gas. So let's write the first reaction H2 plus O2 give H2. If you want, we can write the balanced reaction as well, or we can ignore your timing. Yeah, since we don't know how to balance the reaction at this point of time. So this is the reaction. 
it says that if this is x gram, 8x gram is required. And x plus 8x is 9x gram, right? Law of conservation of mass. So how much oxygen gas would be required to completely use 9 gram of hydrogen? So x, I'll make it as 9, 3 gram, sorry, 3 gram. Why? Because that is the question. It has to be 3 gram. So if x is 3 gram, 8x is what? 24 gram. And this is what? 27 gram. So that means 3 grams of hydrogen will need 24 gram of oxygen to form 27 gram of water. Right? 3 gram of hydrogen will react with 24 gram of oxygen to form 27 gram of water. Pretty easy. Because x gram of hydrogen will react with 8x gram of oxygen to form 9x gram of water of law of conservation of mass or law of constant proportion 8 gram of hydrogen x gram of hydrogen will react with 8 gram of oxygen 3 gram of hydrogen will react with 24 gram of oxygen so this is hydrogen so this is oxygen the big one this is hydrogen this is also hydrogen and this is water. Let's take a few more examples. Which postulates of Dalton atomic theory is the result of law of conservation of mass? So Dalton told that matter atom is indivisible. Atom is indivisible. The second postulate. And it cannot be created, can't be created or destroyed. So this particular theory talks about the law of conservation of mass. Correct. So if you see here, the second theory, this theory talks about law of conservation of mass. But this theory is not 100% correct. Right? We have seen that the atom is divisible. And you can actually convert the mass into energy by using E is equal to mc square formula. So law of conservation of mass actually holds true for most of the chemical reactions, but that is not 100% true theory. The next question, which postulates of Dalton's atomic theory explain the law of definite proportion? We have told you that the sixth postulate That is the relative number and the kind of atoms are constant in a given compound. This explains the law of definite proportion. We have seen the sixth postulate that the relative number and the kind of atoms are constant in a given compound. So, is here the sixth postulate. This is the one which talks about laws of definite proportion. That the relative number and the kinds of atoms are constant in a given Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality educational videos. You can also attend free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.